Hello everyone, welcome to the channel. This is Soham and today we are at the second series of this episode and today we are going to develop the one of the most famous game Rock, Paper and Caesar. So I'm going to code it live in this session and we'll see how step by step we can do a development of such kind of games. So let's get into the code. And yes, if you do not know how the Rock, Paper and Scissor is played, I'll provide a link in the description box. Go and check that out so that you can have a good idea about the game. Okay, so let's get started and begin the development. So here, uh, before doing any kind of development, the first line of the code should be the import statement. All the modules that you are going to use in this program, you have to import it at the beginning of your code. So my first line would be import statement. So here I'm going to use the random module again and I've also used the system module or sys module here. You will see how, how I'm going to use that in my program. So now uh, for every game we have to keep a track of the scores of the players. So here also we are going to have three variables to keep track of the scores. Now the first variable is win which will store the win points or the player win points rather so I'm going to initialize, initialize it as 0 and another variable losses here also I'm going to initialize, initialize it at 0 and another one is ties how many ties is there in the game so these are three variables that are going to use as a score tracker or use a score tracker rather. Now next, uh, this game is such kind of game that the game will continue till the user gives some input or gives some acknowledgement that I'm not going to play it anymore. So until then, until a user interrupts, the game will continue and asking for the uh, you know, moves. So, from a programming point of view, you have to have some mechanism so that your piece of code or your, uh, 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 what should I say, your code that basically going to uh, ask the user for an input and calculate the logics, have to you know, uh, continue till the user gets a negative input. So, the best way is to open a while loop and in the expression, while loop expression, give it as true so that the expression always becomes true and the while loop continues forever till some condition met. So now we are inside this while loop where I'm going to build the actual logic of the code. So in the first screen, I want to welcome the user so uh, let's say print a statement like uh, uh, rock paper scissors game rock paper scissors game fine then I would like to print the scores after each and every move so let's print the values of the variable that I have initialized in the beginning so the values would be first win values win percentage s is going to replace the actual value then losses percentage s times Win. 
lines of lines. So what this lines of code is going to do is it replaces this percentage s with these values. So and it, it is going to, it is mapped automatically to its positional you know values like the, this is the first percentage s so this should get mapped to the first variable under this percentage bracket. So this is the second percentage and it is going to get mapped to losses and this is the third one so this is going to get mapped to ties. So this is how I'm going to replace the variables inside the print statement, the print function here. So this is the one. Now I have to ask the user for their input and I have to validate the input as well. So here in this game I'm going to print uh, like this one say for example I will take R for rock P for paper and S for scissor so these are going to the move going to be the move of the user and the computer as well and I have also needs to consider one thing that if the user has given input apart from these three I have to ask again for a valid input so here I'm going to again open a while loop while true and I'll print here, print. Uh, I'll print it such a way that print r uh, r for rock, p for paper, and p for paper, s for scissor. for quick yes. uh, so I'm going to ask or inform user about the rules okay now I'll click the parameter user input in user a player mode that will be more appropriate. Fine. So I have taken the user input here, and the user input would be stored in the player mode variable. Now I have to check or validate the user input here. So okay. player mode is equals to equals to Q. Means user don't want to play anymore and wants to quit then I will execute this dot so this is where I have used the module that I've imported at the beginning and exit is a function inside the module which exits the current executing exec the current program which is being executed done next okay I have made a syntactical mistake here so it should be there Okay, fine. Then, hey, player mode. Now I will check if the user has given a valid input, which is between R, P, and S. So it equals to equals to R or player mode is equal to equals to s or here mode is equal to equals to p it's a valid one then I would execute break so that I can get out of the out of this loop I just want to use break. And else, okay, I have done enough mistakes here, or rather, syntactic mistakes. So this is the one that I'm looking for. Yes, and that break should come here else I will print no, 
once the control comes this else for which means that user have given something which is not q not r not s and not p either something else which is not valid one from our programming point of view so i'll ask user please input and I would again continue this block or this while loop so that it will again ask user by printing this message and waiting for user to give some input so now assuming that user has given something Q, between Q R S and P so I have an, and I have executed this break statement so I am going to get out of this while loop and run my rest of the code so now we have the player move so we have to print something about the move so I print uh, rather we have to evaluate what is the move that user has given so again open an if statement if their move if player move is equals to equals to r then print rock versus else in player mode is equals to equals to s then print scissor versus else print paper verses so see the code here uh, once uh, I am here means I am I have executed the break statement so the break statement would get only executed when any of these things occur so either are either is or p. So my player move variable would contain either of these three variables, right? So here I'm printing if the player move is R, then I print in the console rock versus. If it is S, I'll print Caesar versus. Else, obviously it should be P. So paper versus. So I'm done with the user portion. So now I have to code for computer moves. So now let me take a variable called computer move which is equals to now i have imported the random module so random dot random one comma three so anything between one and three would get assigned in this uh, computer move variable so I'll assume one for rock, two for paper, three for scissor. So now something has been assigned in computer move and I'm going to compare it like if computer move is equals to equals to one. Then I would assign computer move to rock or R. Uh, 
L is computer mode. is equals to equals to I'm sorry something happened here. Computer mode equals to equals to S then I'm going to assign computer mode oh shit if it is two okay I'm I'm going to assign S here Else, I'm going to assign here uh, to uh, P. That's the last one. Okay, that will be one. So here I am capturing the computer move. <clears throat> so it should either be R, S, and P depending on the number that. Is going to be generated through the rounded module. So if it is one, then I'm assuming that computer move is R. If it is two, then I'm assuming computer move is S. Else, it is P. So now I have the both the users move. Now I have to write the logic. So here comes the actual logic portion of the game. Now if player move is equal to equal to computer move. It obviously is a tag. Okay, so let me decorate it further. Trim. It's a tie. And now I have to assign the variable ties and increase it to one. So initialize it zero and then increase it as one. So my ties become zero plus one, one. If this condition satisfies. Else if <coughs> else if player move is equals to equals to R and computer now is equals to equals to now we all know that rock wins against Caesar so let's keep the computer now as S here then frame so I'm going to handle all the moves that makes the user a win so print you And I'll increase the variable v to plus one. Now the next condition clear move is equals to S. So rock wins against Caesar and Caesar wins against paper. So let's assume the computer move as paper. In this case also, the user is going to get a win point. So print you win. The next is where is equal to equal to P. A paper print is raw. So that is going to obviously get R. In this case also, user the win point. Okay. So here I haven't mentioned the variable. So it should be this one. Here. And I have to put the 
हमारे तो भी done so that's the three moves that makes the user going to earn a win point now i have also i have to also consider the other moves as well that makes the user a loss so here i'm now going to implement the logic so on a just revert the logic what i have just written so better let me copy and paste okay so let me copy it in here and let me paste it from here so that some marking is there so now previously so i don't need this the logic for this ties one because I have already implemented it. Now let's reverse reverse it. So let's make it as and so previously it was S versus P. So if it is Caesar, player move is Caesar and it should be P. So previously, uh, I'm sorry, uh, I'm going to reverse it. So just make that R. Because if you see here, Rock wins against win against Caesar. So Caesar must be losing against Rock. So just reverse the condition. Just see here and reverse it. So now if we, it was a and make this as r or rather for simplification what you can do is so it was previously r and it is a so just make this reverse by making it as s and making it as r Similarly, this is S and this is P, so this should be P and this should be S. Similarly, for last one, P and R, just make that R and make this as P. So this is the condition that makes the user lose the game. So you have to change these variables as well. Losses is equal to losses plus one. So copy it, paste it here. Similarly, paste it here. So this is the thing. Now we have forgot to print one thing. Now here we have print. We have printed the rock versus. Then we have to show here the computer mode. So once I have this here, uh, we have decided the computer move, like if it is one, then computer move is equals to R. You can do one thing here. You can just print. This is rock. So just print rock. Here, print Caesar, and here, print paper, and you also have to do one thing here just to omit the new line here. So we can put end is equals to a null so that new line will get deleted and enter thing in a single line. I'll explain why I'm doing this. 
so that I'm doing this so that say for example user has given an input as R so I'm going to print rock versus then in the same line when my control will come here I'll print say the computer move is A so I'll print rock versus Caesar okay so I'm I think I'm done with the programming let's execute it and see if any typing mistakes or missing technical mistakes is there or not okay okay so let us execute the code and see how it is behaving okay here is saying that invalid syntax okay at line number seven okay so the same while true this is invalid okay so what I'm so okay I've done a big mistake here all the keywords in Python should be in small letter so I've made everything else uh, caps it's a big mistake on my side I think I haven't done some kind of mistake anywhere. So let's run it again and see. Okay, now it is coming. So let me maximize this one. So yeah, this is the first one. First print statement that is in the outer while loop or the master or parent while loop. So here it is showing me wind losses and highs. So it is asking me for input. So let's say I'm giving R as my input. Okay. So rock versus now here it is saying that computer move is not defined. Okay. So some mistake is there. So let me debug this line number 27. So this is D1. Okay. It is saying that computer move is not defined here, but it is asking me so because I am assigning this generated integer to computer move, but I have written a comparison operator. So it should be equal to so that the generated number from random get inserted into computer move. Okay. So let me run it again. Let me maximize this and again press R. Okay. So rock versus paper and it is not giving me anything. So something might happen. So press Q and exit the game come to the comparison part here okay this is R and this is S time so let's debug it further so I have given input as R so first this line this line line of code got executed and then break now I am here that's what it printed rock versus fine the computer move computer move computer move was s so scissor was printed now i am saying that if player move is equals to equals to computer move it's no so this should be the condition that are executed but the this print statement didn't get executed so you have to debug why so if it is R and if it is S it should get executed and print me win and plus points So here now you can see that one more mistake is here 
so for one i am guessing i'm assuming come to move as r for two i'm assuming it is s now here computer okay for three okay else if it is something other than one and two it should be be fine print paper step okay here again i have done the same mistake so instead of assigning i am I have provided a comparison of parameters. So if it is two, this should be s. If computer move is equals to equals to okay else. So if it is not one, not two, then it should be three. So that's what I have written else. So it should be equal to p. So let me delete this one. Again, I'm executing this. So that's how a program should get debugged. Okay, now I am giving the same input as R. Okay, now it is working fine again. So I have provided input as R, so it is rock versus computer has chosen paper. So rock wins against paper. So sorry, sorry. So rock versus paper. So I'm losing. So for user, loss is one. Fine. Now I am giving as P. Okay, so it is a tie. So tie is one now. Okay, now I am giving the move of Caesar. Okay, now I am winning. I have won because the computer move was paper and Caesar won against paper. So now let me move R. Again, I won. So, till now, this is the scoreboard win, loss, and ties. Now, I don't want to play anymore. So, I'm going to press Q. So, I'm out of the game now. So, that's how you can develop a program. And I have also shared how to uh, debug a program because it is very common that when, a, when you are going to develop a program or something, anything i mean any piece of code or any piece of you know uh, so you, you you are bound to get some input some logical errors some syntactical error and you have to narrow down your searches and narrow down your you know uh, error so that you can debug it one by one so always try to con uh, visualize how the code is going to execute and where the mistake is going to happen or is happening so you can easily debug it so that's it for today if you have enjoyed the video do like share and subscribe thank you